today we're actually doing through this tech track. We have Omar, who's the product manager, uh, who is going to walk us through a little bit of the Square Online platform. And then we're going to have Brian, who's going to go walk through a demo. Um, so I will pass it off to Omar to start talking about our platform. Cool. Thanks, John. Um, hey, everyone. I'm Omar, product manager on the Square Online team. Uh, and I'm very excited to talk to you guys uh, about the new Snippet API that we just launched, uh, which enables developers to build on top of Square Online for the very first time. Uh, for some quick background on me, I've been in the website and e-commerce space for a little over six years. Uh, and one of my focus areas is supporting partnerships and integrations with uh, third-party developers uh, for Square Online. Cool. So before we dive in, diving into the Snippet API, um, I thought it'd be helpful to give you all a quick overview of Square Online and how we differentiate from other e-commerce platforms. Um, so we wanted to truly empower all sellers to expand their business online. So we decided to reduce the barrier to entry and offer a plan that's completely free and includes everything you need to start selling online, while also offering more advanced e-commerce features uh, baked into our paid plans uh, that sellers can upgrade to at any time. And also in the spirit of reducing barrier to entry, uh, one of our primary objectives with Score Online was to ensure that it was the easiest way for any merchant to sell online. Uh, and we're continuing to simplify this experience, making it uh, as intuitive as possible and taking the burden away from uh, sellers to set up and launch their site. We also serve uh, multiple verticals uh, with a variety of uh, fulfillment methods uh, and payment flexibility uh, from restaurants and retailers to accepting donations uh, and selling tickets. And then lastly, it's all deeply integrated with Square uh, ecosystem, uh, syncing components uh, such as items, inventory and orders with the rest of Square products. Uh, so next, uh, next let's uh, take a look at some numbers. Um, so we all know that the pandemic has accelerated the growth of um, e-commerce, uh, but I thought it'd be helpful um, or interesting to share some data as a result of this uh, shift to online shopping. Um, and the big story here is that um, our sellers have adapted their businesses to reach their customers in new ways. Um, in the second quarter of last year, GPV from um, online channels was up more than 50% year over year and made up more than 25% of our seller GPV. And one in three sellers who signed up for Square Online were uh, new, new to Square. And then later on, as COVID restrictions um, eased in certain areas, many new sellers who onboarded to, to, uh, to Square Online um, also adopted other parts of the ecosystem, including uh, in-person commerce. And looking at the trends uh, in buyer behavior, it's pretty clear that the growth in online channels isn't going away. Um, as buyers get um, accustomed uh, to the convenience of online shopping. Um, so what are we doing to help uh, sellers adapt to this new normal? Um, well, we're uniquely positioned to respond and help our sellers grow with a few uh, key features, uh, such as uh, seller power delivery, um, enabling sellers to um, offer delivery using their own delivery drivers, on-demand delivery, um, which gives sellers the ability to, um, to offer delivery by tapping into our third-party courier network, um, self-serve ordering, which allows diners to order their food um, and drinks via a QR code on their own personal device at a restaurant or venue, and have it delivered right to their table or seat number. And uh, buy online, pick up in store, uh, which is uh, quickly becoming table stakes for retail stores, um, helping retailers compete against uh, Amazon to offer free and fast fulfillment. And it's expected to be the fulfillment method of 10% of all US um, e-commerce sales by 2025. So these features not only allow one buyer facing catalog to power multiple fulfillment methods, uh, such as delivery, pickup, um, shipping, and touchless ordering, but uh, as mentioned earlier, they also automatically integrate with the rest, th with the rest of Square, uh, the Square ecosystem, uh, providing sellers with a seamless experience across all of their Square products. All right, cool. So now that we've covered um, what Square Online is, um, let's shift gears to jump into the Snippet API and talk about how it enables developers to integrate their applications with uh, Square Online sites. So first, um, what is it? Um, at a high level, the Snippet API uh, enables uh, developers to build third-party applications into Square Online sites that extend its, um, the functionality and help sellers enhance their uh, online presence. How does it actually work? Um, so what the API does is it essentially um, enables developers to inject their snippet of code 
at the end of the head element of a Square Online uh, sites page. Uh, these snippets are scripts that can run as various components of a, of a Square Online site, offering uh, a wide range of functionality. Uh, they can be modals, pop-ups, or background jobs. Um, example use cases are apps that improve buyer conversions on a site, such as social proof apps, uh, or marketing pop-ups, uh, collecting leads and displaying notifications and promotions, uh, or chat widgets enabling sellers to communicate with their website visitors um, on their website. All right, cool. And before diving to the demo with Brian, um, a quick overview of, of the API's functionality. Um, as part of the Snippet API, we're also uh, releasing a site list API, uh, but basically uh, sellers can create and own multiple Square Online sites under the, Square, uh, the same Square Merchant account. Um, so, and since the Snippet API is site-specific, we needed a way to allow developers uh, to specify which site the snippet should be added to. And then more uh, specific to the Snippet API, we have endpoints to upsert, uh, which adds or updates a snippet, get and uh, delete a snippet on the site. All right, cool. And with that, I'll now pass it on to Brian, who will give a quick demo. Thanks, Omar. As Omar mentioned, we built a whole new suite of APIs to allow developers to enhance our Square Online stores. To best showcase the power of these APIs, I'm going to demo a small sample application we've built in Ruby on Rails that will allow us to inject snippets onto some Square Online stores. So without further ado, I'll get started. Here we are on our landing page of our sample application. When I click Connect here, it's going to launch us through the Square OAuth flow. I'll need to log into my account. So here, once we go through the auth flow, we'll land here on the landing page. You'll see that I am now granting access to the developer to read my online sites, modify my online sites, and inject snippets, as well as read some merchant profile information. Redirecting in now. Now we'll land on the main portion of our sample application where you can see here these sites here are now listed through the site list api i'll select my site before i before i inject a snippet i'll give you a quick sample of what my site currently looks like it is a fine furniture store available selling dining room tables if i go through here if i now when i select the cursor here an emoji what's going to happen is the sample application will then inject a small bit of css into the square online store replacing the online store's cursor with that emoji's cursor. So I'll select the ghost emoji. It's making its post now. Now that snippet is injected. If I head over back to my site, you'll see now my site has this very cool cursor. Awesome. And so that is the small sample application. Uh, now let's dive into some of the code. Um, some of the most important code to look at, I believe, is first the Square API client. Um, so the Square API client is what we're using now to talk to these Square online store APIs. Um, it implements four methods directly. Uh, the four methods are list sites, uh, which of course is then fetching the sites from Square Online Store. Get snippet, which is responsible for fetching the snippet. So it's making a get request to v2 sites site ID snippet and retrieving the snippet. Upsert snippet, which is responsible for actually generating and creating the snippet. So it's making a post request to v2 sites site ID snippet. And lastly, delete snippet, which is responsible for removing a snippet if we'd like to remove a snippet from an online store. Um, the other part, powerful part of the sample application that I like to demo is the snippets controller. Uh, the snippets controller, so like I mentioned, the sample application is a Ruby on Rails app. The snippets controller is responsible for handling the request that then actually injects the snippet. So if we head over here, uh, it's just a few lines, but some important things that are happening is when you make a post request to the endpoint, selecting the emoji from the from the post body and making a, an upsert snippet request through our Square client. Um, and what it's rendering actually is, is it's rendering a, a small partial that represents our actual snippet. Um, so if I head over to the partial, this is actually here the snippet of code that will be injected onto a Square Online store. Um, of course, with the one bit of changing, changing content, which is the emoji. Um, and so that concludes my demo of the Square Online store. I encourage all interested developers to read more of the sample app code or even get it running yourself by visiting Square, Square's open source connect sample repository on github.com. I'm now going to hand it off over to John, who will take you through some helpful resources and start Q&A. Yeah, awesome. So you guys just saw the snippets, and we'll open up to Q&A, but wanted to announce 
Obviously, if you are interested in building with it, a great way is actually to jump on the hackathon. Um, so there's going to be a ton of prizes, but Snippets is actually going to be one of the specialty um, prizes, as well as if you are looking at resources, we are going to be able to answer questions through Slack and our forums. Um, but also excitingly, if you subscribe to our Twitter, you'll continue to get updates on the 28th at 11 o'clock. We're actually going to do um, our first series on Twitter spaces, uh, having an open kind of dialogue with Dave Rusenko, who you may have seen in the keynote presentation, as well as Omar and some of the other PMs um, going through kind of ideas and where the platform is and some of the future. So be sure to join that. Um, and with that, we'll actually kick it over to Q&A for now. And right now we're not seeing a ton of questions. So mostly people's cash app who they want apps and cash in there, which I don't blame you. I also want that. All right. Um, if there is not any specific questions about snippets or how we can use it, um, we can close out this dev track. Oh, here we go. What kinds of apps do you see developers creating with the Snippets API? Um, I will give a short answer, and then Omar, feel free to, to answer a longer one. Um, some of the ones you saw was FOMO, which is doing social proof. Um, and then we also have some other marketing apps, uh, such as Popton, which is also launched, uh, that does pop-up marketing. Um, and then Omar, I know there's some other exciting apps that are probably underway. Yep, uh, yeah. So. We're, um, any, anything that's kind of like loading on, on the published site, uh, like pop-ups, modals, um, navigation buttons, um, social media sharing links, uh, those are all great examples. Like uh, and a big one um, that, that we've seen in the past um, in the Weebly App Center was like scroll to top, like where you have this scroll to top button. Uh, but also like uh, you could also do other like types of integrations like analytics, like for A-B testing, um, more like background jobs. Um, so there's definitely a lot of use cases out there. Um, and I think what's going to be very interesting is that um, is like how how the, the API, how you can, how those apps will interact with other Square APIs. Uh, so like John mentioned, FOMO, for example, uh, not only do they use the snippet API to display like the, the pop up on the Square Online site, but they also use orders API to uh, to get order details and display them on, on that pop up on the Square Online site. So I think that would be very interesting. Like, how, what other APIs could be leveraged with with the snippet API uh, to make the app more even more powerful? All right, Cream. Uh, I know currently we aren't able to add custom CSS to Square Online sites. Does a snippets API allow us to do that now? I can answer this one, John. Um, yes, that's um, exactly how the custom cursor demo worked. It um, all the all the injected code was CSS, so you're now able to inject any CSS you would like to inject onto a Square Online store. And do we have to build an app to do that, or do we have, or can we do that on a site per basis for clients? You can do that on a per site basis for for clients. So you can use the Connect APIs as you would for any other Connect API for for the merchant. They're available today on connect.squareup.com. Uh, another question here, is the snippet running in an iframe? Currently, no, the snippet is, snippets are not running in an iframe, so they have access to the entire DOM of the Square Online store. Awesome. Well, thank you for the questions. I know we're at time. So if you guys would like to chat with us more, feel free to, to reach out. I know the lounges are closing, um, but we still do have the forums, the Twitter, um, as well as Slack. So you can always reach out and ping us and we will be more than happy your questions. And we also really look forward to your entries into the hackathon. All right.